Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Let me start by introducing the subject of the day, and then I will uh, introduce the speakers. We're having a meeting on the the development of uh, artistic projects internationally, but I think yesterday we were talking about subsidies and so on. This time we're going to talk about how you can fund projects internationally without making use of the institutional framework. And so to deal with the subject today, we have Renato Lombardo. Good afternoon. You are responsible for the Milano Off Festival. That's it, the third edition. It's a small festival. And uh, it uh, was inspired by the Avignon Festival and also Edinburgh. So in 2015, I had a discussion with the uh, president, uh, the organizer. Uh, uh, we talked about my project, uh, and we are here now thanks to you. Thank you for being here. We have uh, Jan Novak, who uh, is founded Dram Education. You have several projects in it, 10 out of 10, which are author residences. You were here yesterday to to talk about uh, subsidies uh, for educational programs, but you also have projects which are entirely funded uh, by uh, private p patronage uh, or in other ways. Uh, you, if you want to say a few words about to, to reduce your structure, maybe we'll, we will do it after this, uh, the general presentation, otherwise I will really launch into too much. And finally, Grégoire Arel, uh, for RT, which is a participatory funding. <laughs> it's a artistic meeting, a date, artistic dating site. Yes, well, briefly, it's a participatory funding platform for patronage and participatory funding dedicated to culture and uh, which uh, has supported about uh, the 1,000 projects in 2000. 13 to fund them, and we will see some cases of uh, support for French companies to be able to fund their international tours. Fine, so, well, to start with, I'm author and uh, stage director, and practically all of our funding, except exceptional cases, are private funds, either co-productions or patronage sponsoring. So we know the question of participatory funding in France, crowdfunding. So what is the share of crowdfunding abroad in Poati today and also in uh, sponsoring a patronage in the whole of the artistic field. Is it something which has already been developed, which is under development, and what difficulties exist? Well, that is a difficult question. There are a lot of questions in it. Let's say that, first of all, crowdfunding makes it possible to support funding means which are more traditional. I consider that Unless there are specific case, it is not an alternative to public funding, the public or private funding systems which exist, first thing. And the second thing is that in point of fact, uh, crowdfunding is developing a lot in France and in Europe. Concerning France, it is a development which concerns every aspect of crowdfunding, so not going to spend a lot of time on it, but crowdfunding is divided into three parts. You have crowdfunding as a donation, as a loan, and crowdfunding as an investment. 
In the field of culture, crowdfunding concentrates mainly on uh, donations because we consider that uh, loans or investments are not easy to mobilize for artistic or cultural projects. This is what we consider today anyway. And in the field of donations, there is a growth uh, uh, about 40% in 2018, that remains extremely dynamic. And then there are several platforms. Let me continue with France and then we can extend it. There are several platforms in this uh, sector of donations. Keskis, Yulu, Le Corbillon, Poati, there are many others. And on this question, I don't have any figures on the percentage of projects which are linked uh, to an international aspect. Uh, there is no list of them in project typology. Cultural stakeholders, when they come along and do crowdfunding, they do it to support a project. Generally, the project is either production or diffusion project. And it is mainly today the majority of the projects that we support here. I'll talk about performing arts because we also work on other types. For performing arts, most of the projects are the dissemination of artistic projects which have already been produced. That is a majority. And in it, you have a small part for the international, international scope. To come back to sponsoring patronage, as far as I know, sponsoring for performing arts is uh, is developing, but uh, remains still uh, considerably underdeveloped. There are large foundations like BNP Paribas who work in uh, performing arts and who will be able to come into international projects or internationally based projects, but uh, it is extremely reduced. The specificity of RT, which is the reason we have become partners at Avignon Off, are carried by a dotation fund, the mole person non-profit making. We are in social and solidary economy deliberately in order to secure tax reduction, uh, to get a rebate on our taxes. So uh, certainly we have a connected participatory fund to it. So it's the first innovation. So concretely, it allows those who have a project to collect donations more easily. When people get onto the platform, they can see that they can donate more and it will cost them less. You can see they were going to give 50 euros, they would give 50 euros with French legislation. It only costs them 17 euros, so they give on average 100 euros. It doubles the donation. We'll come back to this question, which is the heart of uh, funding and uh, international dissemination linked to tax issues. How can you s give uh, tax systems which are very different from country to country? And let me turn to Renato. I am a novice in this. I suppose I want to fund an artistic project on a festival, but also a show. In Italy, what are the means available to do so? Of course, from an institutional point of view, I uh, heard earlier that uh, we're saying 1% of the budget which goes to culture. In Italy, 0.3%, a little less. Uh, in France, I heard it was 4%. So, and uh, in France, it's not even 03 So, how do you fund Milano off? Well, if you allow me to step back a bit, that is a subject which is very close to my heart. And uh, to think of what I want to say, I saw uh, it's like a Van Gogh 
painting or something, something very artistic, uh, but very deep. So I think you really need to go in depth to understand why you're doing that. So, because you don't have a way in Italy to connect to all of the international projects for many reasons. The first is because it is difficult to get uh, grants from the state. And uh, if you want to have a European partnership between France and Italy, we can't do it. You already know what you have uh, proposed for 21 or 22. We sent in our some, uh, city file to Milano in June, and we should get an answer in September to spend a money, take the money that we need to spend between, uh, uh, by December 2019. Uh, this is almost impossible. So we need to commit ourselves as organizers and put our own money in and um, maybe mortgage our house with the bank, hoping that uh, it, this grant will be accepted. It means it is a dangerous job. And we always wonder who we're doing it for. If you put in 100,000 euros for a festival, and then have to pay the uh, fees for the bank, the, the taxes that I pay to the state, uh, the social contributions and everything that I buy. It's uh, already 60-70% of my budget. And then the state will subsidize uh, to 70-80% of my festival. So I'm lending 70% of my budget uh, to the state, and I will get it back in uh, a year or maybe two. It's crazy. That's why things don't happen a lot in Italy. Then you have a very high level, the cast, or the, in the national stages. So there are differences. All these subsidies have been removed from small theaters. Uh, and the national system gives money ahead of time to the large theaters, which are national stages. Then you have the regional stages, and then you have to associate all the small companies. So national, regional, small companies. So if I have a small company of... Uh, uh, probably people had to have, uh, say, I have a 20,000 euros um, uh, budget and I've been a bit slow in my project. And now I have to deal with, I have to comp I'm in competition with the regional and national level. And I'm number three and the money will come to me a year later. It's really is something that we don't understand. I don't understand why. And I can't find the right uh, person to provide me with answers. So we decided to undertake our approach. I worked in jazz for 35 years in uh, Sicily, and I got subsidies. And I decided to tear up my contracts and say, I don't want to be in such a situation. I am feeling humiliated as an operator. I was born as an operator for this uh, Sicily. It's a kind of humiliation for the profession. Don't count. Everything is decided at a national level or regional level. And we're just people who can do something if they know the right person. I'm not saying it's all like that. If you look at someone here in Avignon, how many companies have you? Italian companies are there? There are ten, about ten. Maybe five already settled in France. There are Italians living in France. We celebrated the four, uh, four centenary of Leonardo da Vinci. You saw it celebrated in France. Uh, even Leonardo da Vinci had already left Italy because the situation was exactly the same 400 years ago. So, so, 
How do you fund Milano Orphanage as we put our own money in? And we hope uh, everything is which has, we take the risks, the theatres and companies. If one has to take part, companies will put maybe, uh, I think, between 100, 120 uh, euros for the inscription. We have technical partners. We have a great technical partner who helps us. Every concert, we pay them with a glass of wine. It's a boy, uh, uh, we give people a glass of wine for them to come. And uh, the companies come to the festival, they go to a theater. Uh, we have three companies in each theater. And uh, the total income for the whole festival will be shared half between the three companies. It's kind of a risk parachute for everyone. The other 50% between us, production, and the festival. It is just a real partnership between the theaters, us, and the companies. How many theaters and how many shows are the off? Two different models. The first model, the first year, was a territorial marketing model. This is the vertical Bosco. You don't heard about that. The very high palace with uh, a lot of art. And the town decided to spend 400,000 for territorial marketing. And we came along to start the festival. I had already implemented something with the administration councillor uh, Avignon. I knew all the models. I did the first one. There were four venues and 15 companies. Next year, the following year, we tried to make it a bit larger at the fringe around Milano because we realized about the Piccolo Theater. There are other areas where uh, some which we can't touch because it's dangerous. And we had 15 venues, 15 companies from uh, Italian, uh, Switzerland, uh, Spanish, uh, from all over the place. And we saw that the city of Milano was not ready. In the small theater, in, they are managed by one or two people, and uh, they get extremely tired by the end of it. We can't do more, and we can't commit more. This year, we started again. We created a village. We found a partnership with the city, we give, uh, uh, we've got a, a cultural uh, venue at a very low price, there's a lot of jealousy to be on. So we, get to, we create a village and a music hall, a music hall off, another one, uh, monologues, and we have five theaters all around the city, each theater will have actual shows. And we have a Milanese, a Milanese, an Italian, and a foreign a company. So it's the recommendations. And the risk of the boss of the venue to take, he must take the risk, and uh, there's nothing we can do there. But uh, we have a lot of technical partnerships uh, who have provide wine, for instance, uh, to help us for the flyers. It's we have no subsidy. The platform in Italy it doesn't work with that kind of thing. At the level of sponsoring patrons, how can you know that in June well, the budgets have to be wrapped up? You can't ask anything for September. You have to think a year ahead, but a year ahead you don't know the availability of the venues. It's uh, dog chasing his tail. And it's not easy. 
But uh, there's great satisfaction because uh, we, this is Italy. We're used to doing things at the last minute, inventing things, and so that's really uh, uh, satisfying. So we do things that we think are impossible to do, and so it's our objective to build uh, Italy as a, a point of reference uh, internationally. And I ask all international uh, uh, parties involved to be patient with us. Of course, this is our third year, so but all of the other organizations are already well, uh, you know, they're, they're stable because the uh, state has enabled them to be so. So if we talked about the artistic side, uh, then uh, uh, I'll come back. Uh, this company that will that won uh, off uh, last year, they came here. They were very successful amongst the professional critics, and uh, so uh, it was in. Uh, we had them go to Wren and the University of Wren because uh, they were interested in that, and so uh, I was interested in Turner. Uh, well, yes, and then people say, well, in Italy, that's not good. Uh, it's not going to work in Italy. Well, and then I said, well, you know, I don't understand that the real wealth of the culture, and we all agree, because that's what we're here for. We're all professionals. But the real, you know, wealth of uh, the future of culture is the diversity, the various uh, uh, languages. The, you know, that's like our mission. Uh, and in France, you are well. Uh, uh, in advance uh, uh, in terms of culture. But, you know, the, the foreign market is other, something else. But it's just that it's starting the notion, you know, uh, of opening the eyes uh, uh, of the others, you know, so that the gestures, everything, uh, it's different ways of saying things. It's the same thing that you're saying, but you're using different gestures and you're doing it different ways. And you can start doing it and break down the barriers. It's the world cultural uh, heritage. So uh, it's not a question of fig figures or an artistic question. It's, you know, working uh, together from the inside. Thank you. Thank you for this message. And uh, indeed, in terms uh, uh, of, uh, you know, development, Jan, you are working with uh, authors and, of, you know, French uh, texts, and you uh, promote French texts throughout the world, and you've been telling us that you work in 47 different countries. What could you tell us something about the development model right from the outset? through to today and how you operate today. Of course, you've got uh, sponsors, you've got uh, uh, subsidies, etc. Well, yes, uh, we have this particular aspect with our team uh, here. Uh, we're all here, Katia and Iris, uh, whom I represent here. Uh, so I speak on their behalf and on the whole team, behalf of the team. Of course, we are based in Poland, uh, a country that has nothing to do with uh, uh, Francophone activity activities and uh, but you know we work for uh, towards uh, uh, the uh, promoting the French language and we work with the whole world uh, uh, we work with 47 countries now and our program consists in international promotion of uh, French authors. We have this uh, uh, program called 10 out of 10, where we invite countries where the French is their official language. We invite them to write plays, 10 days, 10 pages, 10 uh, characters, uh, 10 authors. And so this way, the French teachers or artists that are French speakers uh, uh, throughout the world, they can work in classrooms and schools. And this way, we can promote it and we can incite uh, people throughout the world to learn French and speak French. 
and uh, uh, foster the presence of theaters more and more in their cities. And they're going to learn French through the plays and these authors. And, you know, we have a financial model which is very complicated and complex because we're based in Poland. So we have no um, Polish government funding, of course, because we're just based there. We work only with the French-speaking artists, uh, Swiss or Canadian, African, French. And so Poland says, well, since you're doing that, uh, you're promoting these authors, well, ask those countries to help you. Uh, and they're not absolutely wrong in that, but just a bit, because when you uh, organize international festivals in Poland, there are hundreds of people that come uh, that come to Poland, they discover Poland, and they discover Polish culture, and they leave with a much wealthier uh, cultural uh, baggage, so to speak. And so, in the beginning of our activities, we funded everything with uh, the uh, uh, revenues, uh, uh, for example, the yield of uh, a production. So we stopped and we said, you know, how can we um, do a production in uh, Poland and then to make money to finance uh, another show? So in the beginning, we had a company and everything was set up in advance. So we said, okay, fine. Now they're going to do, you know, 20 shows in 20 cities. And now we're going to have to go out and look at, and look at the money. So we signed all the contracts. And then uh, we had to really work hard. We knew exactly how much money we needed. And so then you, we really did the promotion, you know, come come and see this, the, the show and buy your tickets, etc. And so that's how we worked uh, for a while. Uh, a lot of French and Belgian, Quebecois, um, uh, companies came and uh, the first years, uh, the initial years were very difficult because we didn't really know what we were committed to. We were really afraid that we're going to, um, you know, make them go bankrupt or, or us because the public isn't going to come or they'll take us to court or something. But it worked and so you could develop it better and better and the public gets used to coming. They know that this month in their city next year or this year there's going to be once again a French show and so you know it's starting to become easier and easier and of course we started to work with French companies uh, uh, that firms businesses that are uh, based in Poland there are 530 um, uh, we have uh, Auchan, Carrefour, uh, Decathlon etc and so you know we went to them and asked if they would fund our project and uh, you know so that you know our first major sponsor was Areva, who wanted to set up an atomic plant in Poland. They weren't able to do so, but they believed in it for three years. And for over the for three years, they were giving us money galore. And uh, so, and it was funny, but. Uh, that a lot of uh, artists were protesting. They didn't agree because they're saying if it's the biggest polluter in the world, we're not coming to play because, you know, we're more ecologically oriented and so, which of course I understood, but at least Arriva uh, was good support. But uh, that's really funny, but because, you know, why did they start to support us, give us support? Because the director of Arriva had a uh, uh, a hosting budget uh, for Polish uh, partners because the, they they couldn't use it because for example you do a, a three star Michelin uh, restaurant you know it, it costs uh, three uh, you know you you can put it off you invite them and but uh, you know so they had too much money and uh, uh, you know the people didn't come. But they had uh, the the business line, and that was all funded. But if you, but it wasn't for culture. It wasn't meant for culture. So they took that money and used it for culture. So that was funny. 
Um, and so, but yes, but you know, here, if you're okay, we're talking about foreign structures, but we could adapt it to French, etc. But what, how do you knock on their doors? Well, you have to become friends with the president of the Chamber of Commerce because every country has the, for example, French, Polish uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, but each country has one. In Italy, there probably is an Italian French Chamber of Commerce, and these chambers of commerce do help. Uh, them set up, you know, the Belgians, the Swiss, etc. And uh, in Poland, they have 530 companies in Poland, uh, the, this Chamber of Commerce, and so they really liked our project, and so they had a, a huge list already, and usually it's uh, years of work together. You know, friends, uh, uh, they call each other and they say, listen, you know, there's a young guy who wants to do this, etc. Do you want to come in and have a chat with him? So that's the way it worked each time. So we had direct access because if you had to go and uh, find it yourself, you know, between the uh, sales reps and the attaches, you know, communications and everything, you're going to be blocked right from the start. So yes, yeah, so you should know that there are there are platforms and meeting sites uh, actually, but you know that uh, could uh, uh, you know actually uh, set up uh, these appointments, you know, and uh, you know for festivals and uh, various uh, productions, and then you know you could adapt it and extend it. Now, um, how about you? Uh, Vincent, do uh, do you place them, get them together? Well, no. Up until now, you know, um, we've concentrated on platforms and uh, their extension, and really uh, supporting uh, crowdfunding, uh, where they're the ones who go and look for their own funding. So the these projects. Uh, Uh, address uh, either a specific public uh, or um, businesses. And so there's a lot of uh, various uh, cases that exist. For example, something that I remember, this is not linked to international, but uh, there's a festival in uh, Brittany that was created and all of the uh, uh, yield was came in with the uh, small and medium-sized businesses locally uh, situated. And I remember, you know, there was, uh, you know, a lot of uh, young women that were, you know, really bubbly and motivated, and they just knew how to go about and collect uh, uh, all of these huge sums. Mm, uh, and they got it from these businesses, but that's a minority of cases, but most cases, 70% percent uh, are uh, private uh, uh, donations uh, and the rest come from businesses. So we don't do fundraising actually, but I think it's starting to evolve. We do it a bit uh, uh, on very uh, closely targeted uh, partnerships with the SASM, uh, which is uh, the uh, Musicians uh, Association Guild. And so, you know, they injected money in an operation, and then we can add to the collection. And this opened up uh, the path for us. And so that's a part of crowdfunding. And that's where the future of crowdfunding is, lies. It's the mixing of the euros. The uh, project bearer will launch uh, uh, the uh, f you know collection of funds. And then the partner, depending on the objectives of this partner, will come and add to the collection of funds and will reinsure the donor. And the donor in question will give more money. And so this was a real, really good lever uh, in terms of, you know, partnering, uh, because you know we had uh, we had a rapport of 1.4 uh, ratio. So the inject 1.4 times uh, more uh, the sum that they would normally inject. And so uh, for the Avignon off, it's the first year where we started uh, on this Fringe Festival uh, saying that we will um, uh, support the companies that will come and play. 
in Avignon and will add to their uh, collected uh, sums. So that was a small uh, effort, you know, that one. But then we asked the partners to come aboard. And uh, I think it's a two, three year strategy that has to set up. But we did get good results. We had GMPA, that's a, a chartered accountants consultancy, and they brought in money um, in the form of an award. And so this uh, reward, an award of the off festival, and so they had their uh, wage earner of it. Their employees were voting, so there was 2,500 euros and 1,500 and 1,000 euros, and so that's really good, and we're trying to develop that kind of an approach. So yes, but your organization, for example, uh, that starts doing fundraising for projects, uh, Jan, you spoke to us uh, about the Chambers of Commerce uh, that do France-Polish uh, activities. And so what about outside of institutions? You know, the uh, where, as you were saying, you have to be face-to-face. -face. You knock on somebody's door and you say, do you have money? Do you have money? Until you fall upon someone or several people who do have the funds. But do there exist uh, national organizations in your country uh, or international uh, whose mission would be that, uh, you know, a fundraising mission, either uh, uh, at promotional um, purposes or production purposes? Uh, so, you know, it could be on some other topics other than totally artistics. It could be uh, just uh, supporting young people or something, too. But do does that exist in your country already? Well, in Italy, the, you know, companies that do that, they take their percentage, a uh, huge percentage, uh, and uh, the uh, CEOs of these major agencies are linked to, to these other uh, you know, major economy agencies. And uh, so the cultural attaché or, you know, let's say, Renault, uh, you know, the, you can't talk to the CEO. You have to talk to the secretariat who will ta ask the, this particular agency. And so, you know, and they take uh, a percentage. And so, you know, I question this because you can't ever have a real contact with the brand itself, with the factory, Renault, for example. And so in Italy here, I'm not going to mention this brand. Uh, well, yeah, anyway, uh, it, it's Carrefour, and that's what we did. And we were in discussions for two months. And, you know, the, they wanted to become the main sponsor. And so... I did everything I could do, you know, to have a really good impact of the festival. And after two months, the woman uh, proposed 10,000 euros in uh, grocery shopping. And so, you know, so if you give, you know, 50 uh, times this, you know, I said thanks a lot. But, you know, we won't be able to do that. You know, some agencies do that. But it's very difficult to, to get really in contact with the right person or to know somebody on the board of directors or whatever. Uh, for You know, for in, in order to find somebody and have a face-to-face -face, uh uh, meeting, in my experience. Now, for theater, now I know that it's the City Hall, for example, you know, we have seen in Milano, for example, in Italy, there are some theaters, you know, they call an SOS and they'll uh, ask the mayor to find a sponsor and uh, to really participate, you know, and so that'll help them. Or someone else that would ask, uh, they've asked for something else uh, uh, from, from the city and then the city can ask them to sponsor. But uh, did you accept the 10,000 euros in uh, grocery shopping tickets? N no, it's a huge error. Uh, it's a big mistake because 
if Carrefour gives you 10,000 euros of grocery shopping tickets, uh, then you can say 10,000 that you have, which can lower the percentage of the city or another partner. Because if you ask for 50% of the budget, uh, then they'll say, okay, well, that's 50%. But if you put 10,000 euros, maybe that 15, 50% will become 35. Or, and that way, your potential sponsor can give 35 instead of 50. Well, they just see figures. And so less uh, zeros in a person, you know, that's better for them. And so if you have a, a voucher for 10,000 euros, then you buy 10,000 uh, euros, then you buy the wine, and then you give it, you know, you can use the wine in your <coughs> promotional activities. And so always take it. If they give you something, take it. For us, we're lucky because we have two sponsors. And I can't say the names because they're very, very private. And they have billions of euros. And they give us a little bit of money because they like it. And once uh, we were together with one of these sponsors and they said, oh, you know, uh, they were saying, somebody was saying, oh, geez, you know, uh, they're really mean. They want to give us uh, 300 euros, for, uh, you know. Uh, and then the woman said, well, take the 300, you know. Uh, if somebody wants to give you 10 euros, take the 10 euros. And that's how you can make a fortune. If they want to give you something, just take it. And then, you know, it can um, uh, be worked in somehow. So, you know, if you take those vouchers or whatever, uh, you can use it somewhere, uh, you know, in volunteer work. or when, And you can always say that here, I've already got 10,000 euros and Carrefour can um, certify that they give it to you. And so it's as if you can budgetize the uh, contribution of the city, for example, 15,000 euros, uh, because that's usually what it is. But um, and then maybe you can, it's only 300. Uh, it doesn't, even if you get it at 300, and you can lower the percentage for the following sponsor, you see. And so usually the more partners you have, the better it looks for the others. And so that's how we did it. And we did it for a long time this way. As a matter of fact, we still do it this way. People don't like huge sh figures. So uh, so long as the percentage is small, uh, then they give more easily. Well, yes, I agree with you actually perfectly well because the promotion actually, uh, uh, the it was fifteen thousand. It went up to fifteen thousand euros. So, you know, with the promotions, then it really became more or sales, and so it became more. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, I do take what what they uh, offer, but when you see that there's speculation behind it, and you say no, no, I prefer, uh, you know, uh, put that aside and, you know, do marketing with the smaller boutiques and local production, yes, yes, local producers, um, um, local businesses, rather. And so, yes, now just, uh, you know, concretely, sponsors uh, um, are very difficult to mobilize. And uh, Kwati, for example, uh, we're starting to be a bit more visible and, uh, you know, working on development, etc. But, you know, uh, you know, it's true that, you know, we uh, started with nothing. And once we started mounting our projects, we started with zero. And we started to go around the table and go around and looking how to get some uh, funds. And uh, we went to these major businesses. And we realized that it was an impasse. You couldn't because most of them really don't like sponsorship a lot. Uh, you know, it's usually a, 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 the performing arts, you know, is intangible. You can't really buy it. You can't buy and make a collection like photographs. You can't do a collection of plays, for example, and uh, sell it later when it uh, actually... Um, uh, the, the value uh, increases. But, and so, uh, you know, they mobilize, mobilizing the major, you know, mm, companies for that, it's less easy. So I don't know if it's easy elsewhere, but it's uh, easy, not that it's less 
easy to do for culture and less so for the performing arts. And so we end up saying that we'll just have to, you know, make do by ourselves. And so the crowdfunding, really, first of all, we wanted to go to the big sponsors and we wanted to read uh, uh, artistic projects, uh, read plays, etc., and go and contact these sponsors, you know, and, you know, play, you know, on the uh, the percentage and, you know, uh, see how we could do the fundraising and make it good for them. And it just didn't work. And so we had this idea of uh, hooking up with our crowdfunding uh, system and you know and it, we were surprised because we all you know um, pulled up our socks and worked and it started working and Quartis is becoming to de- get developed and we have absorbed a platform called Tusta Prod which is audiovisual production so for the past two years we've been going to Cannes uh, and because in Cannes we're in contact with the uh, cinema industry uh, that you know, is undergoing difficulties as well. They have money problems as well. Uh, But uh, the industry is totally different uh, than ours because I uh, I feel that we're from, you know, the live production industry. And (coughs) so, of course, you know, some people have intermediaries. They have marketing. They have communication departments, etc. They can contact the major businesses and, you know, say that, okay, so it's either uh, uh, sponsoring, small partnering, um, that's a specific term, meaning exchange uh, of uh, good practices, so which means that I'll do communications on your brand if you do it on mine, etc. And so uh, it's an uh, artistic sector here that we have to uh, revolutionize uh, the uh, funding. We mustn't... Uh, sell our souls and our uh, uh, freedom of expression and um, but we need to be able to speak money raise funds and convince uh, uh, people that it's good to invest in this sector and so here and this is what I wanted to say our message is that let's do it together let's get together to do this and uh, obviously, you know, I'm not going to make anything up or make. Uh, if you're looking, uh, you know, with a great partner and everything, so you don't want to denounce any of this. But you're glad, you know, to have found a solution to your problem. And of course, uh, you can't solve the problems of others. But <coughs> this is more of a collective approach of. Uh, valorizing, enhancing, networking, sharing information. And this is how we will be able to, little by little, get out of our individual difficulties. A question for you, Jan, without giving the name of this uh, sponsor. Let's meet just off this. How is the relationship with the sponsor over a long-term period? How long have they been supported you? You? We've got three. We've got three. For four or five years, about. So, what happens in terms of dialogue, partnership, sponsoring with these people over a long term period? Because, well, for me, as a show producer, if I go to, uh, to crowdfunding or sponsoring, it will be for a project, uh, a play, either to put it on or to diffuse it uh, nationally or internationally. So, what happens? Is it sponsoring for operating? And so what's, about th- what's the dialogue with these people? Well, I can't say it. If I could, I would tell you what the people are called, but they don't want me to. That was a deal. You won't find their logo anywhere on our advertising or anything. It's just that they like our project. Long time dialogue with people like that is... Uh, based on truth, you can't tell them nonsense. You need to tell them the truth. Point of fact, uh, they've been in business uh, all their all their life, and so they know when you're telling the truth and when you're not. So it's better to tell the truth immediately, what you want, uh, how much it costs, and what uh, is it for. 
on Washington 30th time, they will say, no, that's no good, and you can lose. It's happened to us to hide in the organization of something, to spend money in uselessly, and say we don't know how to do it. But if you tell them the truth when you're, uh, if you're sincere, that's fine. And something else. They don't take it as an investment. Why they don't ask for anything in exchange. But uh, regarding the fortune, it's, it's uh, very little. I won't say that they don't uh, take them seriously because you can call them, you can talk. Uh, but uh, it's not as if they're giving you 10 million euros for it. just uh, get on with your project. The relationship with money is different if it's not much for them. I don't worry very much. If I have to say anything when I'm talking with these people, it's the truth. So if you need that, sometimes they give you a, an annual budget and in the middle there is a project which comes in we say then the budget won't be enough. We say, listen, we hadn't planned this in January. Can you help us as well? Because look at this as a project and generally say, send a description and uh, we'll see how we can help you in the development. Very pragmatic uh, dialogue. But you, but you must always uh, work equal to equal with these people. You shouldn't come along saying, oh, I'm little and yours. Uh, you're small, uh, you're, you're big, and I want um, uh, you don't go and beg. You know, they, and they like to talk with someone on equal footing. If someone says, I don't understand what you mean as a sponsor, and you say, oh, no, no, I'm so sorry, I didn't explain it correctly. No, I say, okay, let me explain it again, and so on. That's something they appreciate as well. We've talked about funding by businesses. Sponsoring can also come in from very rich people. Renato, earlier on you were talking about technical sponsoring, support from people who might give you equipment, wine. What about support outside uh, money relationships? in exchanges, uh, non structures. Well, it's always linked to truth. It's the same thing. If you give a million, whether you get a million euros or a box of wine, crate of wine, it's the same thing. The partner's not only committed because of what they are giving, because but they are committed to the project. That is something. We create a link uh, between them and the project. Uh, we meet them to explain the project, uh, say, what can you do? Do you have any ideas uh, to progress? Uh, uh, how could you help us? And uh, uh, for instance, uh, you can advertise it on uh, television or the radio. Everything we can do to connect is networking, not only from a technical point of view, but as a team. We are all eating from the same dish, and they're all partners. And uh, the more connection there is, uh, the more the project can progress. Uh, and maybe, hopefully, you can uh, attract sponsoring. So I also need to uh, thank uh, Francesca, who is uh, the artistic director. She has, works with me with a lot of... Uh, love and she also uh, economic support because we've been friends. This, the projects that we have, uh, uh, in, we do a number of cultural projects based on FIVIC, uh, and we do not take any subsidies from the, the state. We decided for that, but we sent in uh, a file this year for, to see what happens, not to cover our budget. 
but have another budget to do something else because it's also important. So we also need to see how the artists they need to have a, a, a third eye because going international is a mission, an artist is a traveler. It's a, not always perfectly controlled. You go abroad. It's a, uh, the very minimum in uh, a strip is a 60 euros minimum, the social contribution 30 euros. Since for French artists to come to Italy, it's not uh, convenient and not uh, economically interesting. So maybe it's a search for interior wealth. It can be interesting to travel not just for money, but what you can gain inside. But for many people, do you think the Italians are interested in things uh, happening in French? And I think that uh, I think uh, the art is uh, worldwide, and we must believe uh, that we are the discoverers. Need to, because for Columbus, it's we need to find the barriers and put an end to them. It is difficult to go abroad, but maybe you uh, might have much more interior wealth afterwards. Maybe you've only got 30 people in the room, but you've got 20 Polish people listening to an Italian play, uh, played in Italian. That's 20 people who have enriched uh, themselves uh, interiorly. Maybe it's visionary to say that, but we need to encourage sponsors, uh, states, and people to have a common uh, mindset. That is what we try to do. Just to come back to the major businesses, when you are small, and we consider ourselves to be small, you cannot come along and go to see someone, for instance, for Carrefour or Jean, and impress them with figures. Because the guy who has 50,000 employees and spend uh, 10 billion euro every year on advertising. So they won't be impressed by it. For instance, even with this uh, opinion of, of festival and 1,600 troops, uh, companies, to, to sell. So, but when you tell a story and you sell them the wealth which can't be measured in terms of money, if you can't measure it, they believe it to be magnificent. We're talking pragmatically about funding since the beginning, but we have this notion, message, symbol, the interest which uh, cannot uh, have a figure on it for the producers, also for local population, uh, the people who are going to see the shows. This dimension and this role is it appreciated by the sponsors, the donors, other than the institutions, because uh, we know about a public mission, but a company like uh, Carrefour, you mentioned Auchan, they do not have a uh, public mission. I said maybe a moral ambition, sometimes often to uh, uh, for their brand image, because it's good for their brand image, but for for you, the message is one of the major keys uh, to get the people interested. Yes, it's important in the world of today. We still uh, work with people who don't talk to a screen. And you can talk to a person for half an hour and they won't move. And just one sentence will attract their attention. I say, oh, that's interesting. You've touched the person and not the, the company they represent. And they might say, in terms of figure efficiency, it means nothing. But it's beautiful. 
Maybe I won't give you 15,000 euros as you want, but I can give you three or four because it's a nice idea. You will remind you maybe of something in their life. I don't know. And that's, oh, yes, that's cool. And uh, the person has the power to give you money because the companies uh, never do an assessment action per action. It's an annual uh, assessment of they have invested uh, so much in a little festival, we didn't make any money, uh, you gave them 5,000 euros, but they don't see that kind of figure. Globally, they said we have been efficient, particularly um, compared with the previous year's revisions. So you must try and sell the ideas that you have. And if the idea is a true one, sincere, there's a good chance that you can uh, get something by touching the person. Let me bounce back by saying that uh, concerning this type of issue, it is essential to have this relationship, as you're saying, with the major businesses. I think you must always try, always allow yourself time. We defend a kind of alternative model. It's not that we have completely given up contacting these people who have considerable means. I think you must never give up because you can provide them with a kind of wealth is important to speak equal to equal. We are sharing your wealth with them. And we think it is simpler for the time being and complementary to call upon the crowd. And this could be a first step to be able to, as time goes on, to get in touch with people who, where the access is more difficult. I'd like to take time to look at uh, one or two collections, ask people to show it. Just look at the detail when we're talking about uh, alternative funding, not about the X, Y. These are cross funding uh, uh, X, Y company. We have it also on other platforms, which is interesting. I said uh, we accompanied the XY company, it's a very large national circus company, uh, acrobatics in particular, and they have a historical partnership with Cis Jordan. And they went to Naplouse for a residence and they do a creation not only in France, they also do this within the scope of this partnership with these so countries, and this time Naplouse. So, you say you collected 4,100 euros. I'd like to click on the budget, show the budget, see that the 4,000 euros that they had asked for was 10% of the budget. It's not a lot. And you have the whole detail if you scroll down. You can see it's to pay wages, 17,000 euros, air tickets, 15,000 euros. And despite all, they needed the money from crowdfunding because they weren't, uh, hadn't managed to wrap up their budget, and it worked. What percentage is that? Ten percent of the global budget. What, similar to what Jan was saying earlier, this question of uh, saying if it's even a small percentage. It uh, means that you don't show the shares of the different partners or producers in a larger result. Even technical subsidies, we're talking about uh, 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 vouchers for Carrefour, for instance. Also what you were saying with a dotation fund, one partner means you can gain credibility, have a low percentage for a donor, whoever they are, we sure that more circuit makes uh, the project credible. Allow them to wrap up their budget and uh, build their uh, project much more comfortably with immediate uh, money available. 
and also communicate on something where they will communicate very little. They communicate a lot about their shows, which uh, go everywhere in France. And this was their share of dream to go and work with Palestine and Palestinians, uh, do residences, and work with the Palestine uh, Circus School. It is a very deep issue. We take a second example, and then I'll finish. Which one was it? The Tournée Malgache. Tournée Malgache, Active Musica. It was about 2,500 euros were collected. It's quite revealing because the amount of uh, collections tend to be 7,000, 10,000, 15,000 euros. The largest one was 90,000 euros. These are small amounts. Uh, well, I do remember that, but it's interesting as uh, the collection was carried by the French Alliance. It's a French alliance in Madagascar who launched uh, this crowdfunding to help a company dis uh, disseminate in Madagascar. So what I mean here, French Alliance remains association settled locally and so on, but also a representative of the French system, uh, promotion of French culture abroad. And you see the operators like that who get into crowdfunding so marginal amount, if you look at the budget, uh, out of the 17,000, uh, it's a small budget, but I think it's also a way to be concrete on what you can find in the round table when we would, uh, when this morning we said for the first uh, steps to go on board, two or three thousand euros are necessary and it's difficult to find them. It can be a solution, but for an international tour, it will cost 30, 40 or 50 thousand euros. Crowdfunding can be one way, but it will never be a single solution. That is what, it, what I wanted to explain with these examples. And we'll go on to questions. If you do not hesitate, prepare your questions if you have any. A few seconds to say that I use uh, uh, jazz, and I go to Paris uh, and I put together projects to export French music. I have a tour in uh, New York and in Tokyo. And is it in France? There is a way to do it. We're in France, and we must say you have a State means which make it possible to travel abroad. You just have to go and look for them. You need to know uh, all about your artists and uh, your project and uh, say, I want to go abroad. To decide where you want to go. So look at the market. Uh, and France, with the third eye, as I mentioned, will find a way to. Uh, provide assistance as the great wealth of the, uh, the nation. And it's the 14th of July, Bastille Day today. Well, if you have questions on this question of international uh, development and funding beyond uh, institutional frameworks, do not hesitate. The first question is always most difficult. But I have one. Maybe I'm pointing in the direction, but we're talking about funding systems which are the same as what we have in France. Sponsoring patronage, uh, private or um, business, uh, crowdfunding. So here I'm asking Renato, who is Italian and Jan Polish. Are there ways of funding in your country or that you have met internationally which are specific to these countries? New ideas, for instance, that we don't have in France. 
No, the same thing as well. No, it's not the same. Uh, Everywhere. Uh, <laughs> and uh, ahead of uh, Italy or, or Spain, what I think is, is, is uh, creative Europe or things that we can find from the major national stages who have a budget. Today, I also asked Paco. There's a big festival for uh, uh, what he decided to give a budget for that. This comes from national level. That uh, the artist can sometimes link up with a national, uh, large national stage because you don't have the possibility to take part in the Creative Europe. And something else. Go to the embassy. But you need to know the embassy, uh, embassy and the ambassador. It's not always easy. You need acquaintances. And you there's no single way. There's no, uh, no one will provide you with the, the, the exact road to follow. My French is not very good, but please, Renato, you can help me to translate what I want to say. The it's the Italian SASEM uh, uh, give a bit of money to the authors. The Society of Artists will give a little for new artists. Do you know how many requests come in? And uh, the budget is very limited, and there are millions of uh, requests coming in. Uh, and it's about 100,000 euro altogether. If uh, uh, you just have a small amount, you can't uh, travel abroad, obviously. It's sure that in Italy it is a first uh, step to progress. But it's this little step that we are taking, uh, but there's a long way to go still to get to the same level as you. A question there. We haven't talked about it a lot. It's uh, for cultural projects in France for performing arts. The uh, authors' rights or representation of artists' rights, whether it's SASEM, SSCD, SPEDIDAM, the support fund, a uh, number of organizations which uh, help. They also help small companies for smaller projects. I don't know the same things as this award, but in France it is uh, something which is considerable. Since we talked about Creative Europe, a project which is funded by Creative Europe, then they have two funding levels. They have one up to 200,000 euros and one 2 million euros for 200,000. This is accessible to a lot of small companies, and I am convinced, I mentioned it yesterday, the solution is to knock down the walls. If you go on uh, going round in circles, wondering how you manage to get enough money with a small number of, the number of people in a small venue, it's no good, it's not profitable. You need to create secondary public to be able to broadcast theater online in the same way as the sport has been broadcast for 50 years. More than 95% of uh, revenue for sports teams don't come from uh, the tickets sold in stadiums. It comes from bro live broadcasting. There are hundreds of millions of people who watch sports online or on television. If we can create an online public 
maybe just 10 percent of the size of the online public for sports, it will be a real revolution to our revenue. Money will pour in. So you need to create this second republic. And uh, Europe created, funded our program. See, this uh, session is being streamed free of charge, three programs a day in a very nice VR 360 degrees. Uh, television can't do that. Cinema can't do that. There are digital tools that we can use to recreate interactivity of uh, um, theatre that television can't do. I mean, don't forget that a lot of young people who started their lives with these interactive screens. You have to look at that and you get more and more funding on so you, uh, the Europe, Creative Europe uh, is looking into this type of project, for instance, uh, to broadcast uh, online. I'm John Paval. The project is called EU Arts Live. The first uh, release was on all of the seats. And Gabriel was fabulous because this year when I came, I came to the festival five years ago. I already want to talk about the project. No one wanted to talk to me. This year in February, I came and I met uh, Gabriel, who's organizing the conference. She was wonderful. She said, it's a great idea. Come along and uh, take part in one of the sessions. So the mentality is really progressing. The program that we're putting on every evening, I invite two or three companies to come and play 10 or 15 minutes of their show. And then we discuss about the project and the show. When I meet the companies on the streets, they are delighted to do it. Five years ago, they didn't like it, not at all, not even the idea. So technology is coming. The question is, who is going to control it? And I would rather it be us, because if you have commercial powers, everything, not a good idea. Creative Europe, Creative Europe is great. But you, uh, it's very difficult to send in a project. Your Creative Europe is uh, the European project uh, funding 50% of the project uh, for up to 200,000 and then 200,000 to 2 million. But you have to provide the half of the budget. If you want 100,000, you need to get another 100,000. It's not easy to get. And another problem, uh, the outputs of your Creative Europe, if you go wrong in your results uh, by uh, 10 euros, you have to return the money. I have friends who have prepared projects for festivals for Creative Europe, not able to do the second one, because it took uh, so much time and energy to publish the results that they weren't able to deal with the second edition. If you have a structure, we can just devote itself to the project and then the results of the project and it's uh, two or three people full time, fine. Creative Europe will provide a lot. I also tried to send in a project uh, maybe five years ago, I was just starting out and then it was dreadful, the 70 pages uh, in the file with answers that I could not provide. Fortunately, I did get the funding Otherwise, I just wanted 5,000 euros. Yes, that's perhaps quite difficult, but something that they do today, if you consider that if you go for such funding, it must be for a project that you can uh, make sustainable over the long term. Uh, so uh, it's not a question of going to get money and then going again and asking for more money. It's to create uh, the infrastructure for something that can be maintained. And then you don't need, you know, if they don't didn't like it the first time, then it doesn't really matter because you can actually make it profitable for the future. And uh, what's really important is that you mustn't continue to become dependent uh, upon public monies. Uh, 
you know, you can imagine, you know, uh, you know that for sports, they don't go and ask uh, uh, for money to be able to survive. But, um, well, yeah, but uh, they can support other clubs that are even smaller to train, you know, pl their uh, sportsmen uh, for the future. But in France, for example, whether the villages, the cities that uh, uh, give the subsidies, you know, well, no, you know, it, it's it's really for profit. Uh, the profits are great. Uh, but if we do another system, then, you know, there will be more money for the small companies because there's more profit for the bigger companies. So, which means that if we can create this immense public that is out there, that exists, and, you know, even the people online, uh, they uh, go on direct uh, uh, news, for example, and they're all, we can just flood them out there. And But if we look for uh, the performing arts, there's nothing, zero online. And so the people who will find the means of creating the model to establish a presence, presence for us online, that will change everything. So if they can do it for the news, if they can do it for sports, uh, then it would be great. There are excellent shows out there throughout the world. All we have to do is put it online. Well, if I may, uh, you know, the performing arts is not video. You know, this is just my uh, thoughts. Uh, it's the living arts. Uh, 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 and, you know, if I can just go into a bit of philosophy here, I really feel um, the weight of the soul and the emotions already are a weight. If you think about St. Peter when the... Pa uh, the, uh, the square and the Pope arrives. There are, you know, millions of people there. Uh, and the emotion that goes, because each individual has a, a soul and each soul has its own, carries its own weight. And so it's a whole field of emotion out there. And so it's the door open to the devil for the marketing and of course uh, it's like for jazz and for music I do believe that it will increase uh, the revenues uh, the market uh, place but we must be very careful in terms of technology so that the technology doesn't take over the important question of art which is a combination of uh, uh, emotions and we must and sell our souls uh, uh, and the artist world to the market and to television. You know, there's, it's not television anymore because, you know, as I say, it's the door uh, open to the devil, you know, to sell things. No, we are the living arts and we must come back to living arts. Uh, that's really what I think. I am with you all the way to develop technology uh, for the marketplace for the advertising okay fine but that's just my thoughts but we'll try anyway well, I think that, you know, we shouldn't uh, be in an opposing type of a system of oppositions. Uh, concretely, I he hear you both, and I agree with both of you. Well, yes, me too. Well, yes, and I know that you're both on the same side. So, actually, you've got the same values, and so the issues that is laid down here is uh, one, there are two questions that arise, is the value, mm, you, it's what you said, everything depends on the, you know, passing on to, you know, broadcasting uh, uh, channels of the living arts, uh, no matter what it be, but the issue is uh, uh, actually uh, concerning the, the money and the value of it, the monetary value, uh, that will be increased, but also the blockchain that will uh, get the value coming right up to the initial producer in forms of micro funding, and that's the name of the game is the model, creating the model. Where are the initial places and authors that had the idea first? And the second thing being 
the fact of creating new practices that we can't even imagine. And I can give you a wee example because I'm a former um, stage director and, you know, I really can defend, you know, the personal rapport between the artists uh, on the stage and everyone on the stage. Uh, but, you know, we have, we've equipped a, a movie theater uh, and, you know, we can't get operas coming from Paris. We don't have the financial means. And also, we projected the uh, uh, Paris operas, and I started projecting these uh, in, the theater, in the movie theaters. First of all, I thought it wasn't going to be very interesting, and secondly, I thought there weren't going to be very many people, and wow, I was wrong. Uh, and I discovered that it was absolutely passionate because it showed backstage and how it was actually produced. It was inventive, it was creative, and uh, so people who didn't go to the opera in Paris, they were able to really um, come in touch with it uh, in with something that they don't really have access to otherwise. And people were 50 kilometers outside of Paris, and for various reasons, they didn't have access to any of these operas. And so afterwards, because I did uh, uh, surveys, uh, public surveys, it's not the same public that comes into the live theater that I have come into the movie theaters to watch the opera on the screen. And so there's two different publics. And so I think that this public will go to the opera at one point in time, the live opera in Paris. Sorry to uh, take them over the mic, uh, but you know, it's uh, if you have a public that doesn't exist and offer them a new experience and it can actually create a new artistic pathway uh, and uh, you need both actually in the, uh, really getting the value, increasing value as well. Well, yes, even if it's really very interesting and even if we're talking about broadcasting uh, or promoting uh, internationally of uh, artistic projects. But of course, there's the notion of uh, the financing. Yes, do we have a question here? Yes, hello. Yes, I'm the administrator of a company uh, um, that plays in the off here festival, uh, the Fringe Festival here. And, uh, you know, I work uh, in European or international projects. Uh, and I have two questions because you can share your experience with us. What enables you to mobilize a certain community on projects that uh, uh, they're not really um, involved with, you know, because, of course, you don't feel that uh, involved in or concerned with a project that's at the other side of the world. So in Avignon or elsewhere, how do you get them uh, mobilized? You know, this community that we talk about on the web, this public, you know, that will feel sufficiently concerned to come out and, and participate. And also how to open uh, European or international communities of uh, individuals or have an in international structure of individuals that would feel concerned by a European uh, project or not just a national project uh, in another country. Uh, so are we going more and more towards platforms uh, in various languages uh, that would uh, enable us to include uh, various countries uh, in a common project. So I don't know if uh, this means anything to you. Yes, thank you very much. I wanted to thank you for your experience sharing as well. Well, yes, while well, you're raising two difficult questions that are both very pertinent, difficult because indeed you know, we have to say that research and um, the recognition of crowdfunding, you know, we're just at the outset. It started about 10 years ago and uh, research in it has evolved, is always progressing and uh, it's uh, moving forward and it's very recent but what i wanted to give you as a piece of information it's not it's not found on research but on practice and intuition and I hope that one day we will have the opportunity to share uh, these issues uh, of uh, searching, seeking for funds. And so 
Now, I uh, had the feeling regarding this other question, uh, and I, if I rely on the research that I know, it's very difficult because there is a specific aspect to crowdfunding, the same as for the living arts. And the specific aspect means that there's a local dimension that's a very strong. Uh, so there is participative you know, funding, crowdfunding for gaming, or it's the same as for audiovisual. And uh, so for the performing arts, uh, what really works is the local dimension of this. Uh, so somewhere, you know, going to look for money to say, hey, help me get to the other side of the world. Uh, and uh, you, we're going to be kind of offbeat with respect to the specific aspect of crowdfunding with, uh, for uh, performing arts. And that's what you're saying before, is individuals uh, in face, facing other individuals. Well, yes, of course. But then there's also the commitments that are different. To be positive, uh, I think uh, we, I need to say that it's to be invented and to actually to switch over to the second question, we uh, raise the question of crowdfunding and the counterpart and the how it can be offset and have uh, people uh, participate, you know, those who are the donors. And um, the, my advice would be to imagine uh, a counterpart uh, that will be useful and profitable to those working locally. And I, based on the principle that if you launch a, um, collecting funds uh, to do something in uh, Pol Poland and you're in the middle of France here, you won't be able to, you know, reach out to the Pol Polish uh, people who could help you finance uh, your the experience to help you get out of your uh, neighborhood and go to Poland. And so you will be addressing people who know the work of your company that your public, your audience, and I would encourage this. It's a general general advice that I'm giving here, and uh, it has to be accumulated, you know, with uh, communicating with your public, and so you have to imagine uh, 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 an exchange uh, that can be stimulating and to help you go off and do something in Poland. And so, you know, you you have to work a very far upstream during and after as well on your project, uh, even on feedback, etc. So the emergence of uh, communities in Europe and companies that would help you um, uh, act uh, and take... Uh, part in crowdfunding you know i know that there are, uh, there are some platforms cropping up but i do notice that this will take more uh, time than in other economic sectors and other uh, digital operators and it really is centered and focused on domestic markets all the markets in all major european countries you have one two three platforms which are mostly local and there aren't yet any European uh, operators like BlaBlaCar or others like TriV that was bought by the Americans, uh, the European ones. The reason the uh, TriV uh, was bought out by the Americans because it was the unique one uh, that what was pan-European. And so that's a challenge for the platforms. What's of interest to us at Quarty is, and I was spo speaking to you a moment ago about this, um, is uh, deploying our system of crowd funding in the form of uh, pan-European sponsoring. And I'm starting to work on that as of this year. And so as a good Frenchman with all our qualities and all our uh, faults like us, you know, you know, and he, so here we started by Belgium and uh, we started with uh, donations by uh, the French who are uh, for taxation purposes set up in Belgium and so that they can get um, 
tax relief. And so we're really at the very beginning of this. And so now we're going to have to end uh, uh, in a few minutes. I do have two questions, though. Um, the first one being, what about multi-taxation? Uh, how to manage the various taxation systems from one country to the next? And how to handle the uh, subsidies, sponsors, etc.? Are there different structures in each country? So how, for example, a very precise example, in France, uh, someone can get help from Italian or Polish uh, entities. Well, you know, I don't know. I talk through experience in Italy. I haven't seen any subsidies to go abroad. It's very difficult to receive any uh, tax relief whatsoever or tax exemption uh, and so but uh, what I'm talking about you know uh, Poland and France for example exchange uh, French Polish of course it's easy if you ask Carrefour who is installed in Poland of course it's uh, they uh, have to they uh, are under the Polish tax system and so that means that they don't have to divide well yes if there's a French firm that gives um, money in that peri and the, well in the country then the taxation falls under the country that it actually uh, is set up in so, well there's the rule of you know inter community uh, sales tax for example uh, we're not involved in that as an artist that uh, uh, actually earn money and the companies they know how to deal with that well it's even worse because we're taking uh, uh, the uh, sales tax uh, of 10% to sell the uh, play or the show in Italy but it's uh, you know 22% uh, when you buy it so uh, for uh, tax exemptions, uh, and uh, if you're talking about sponsorship, etc., it's interesting to know that there's no legislation, European legislation, concerning sponsorship. But that has all fallen under the respective countries. And it's because, as you know, uh, taxation remains uh, something to be handled unanimously in the European community and the rules that they have set down were only to um, um, prevent the common market from functioning and so in the area of sponsorship I think there is nothing no legislation there but on the other hand I'm a very federalist <laughs> federalistic um, and uh, so today I work uh, on the basis of uh, the uh, uh, the precedents uh, uh, existing in the European uh, Union and so you know the it's federal so the federations have to come under a structure and uh, any donation uh, made by an individual or a firm in another member country uh, in the European uh, Union space, which is greater than just the continent. And so the tax exemption is done within the, if it's done, the sponsorship is done within the country that they are in, then they really get tax reductions. So iman imagine uh, this uh, decree by the co justice, uh, Court of Justice of Europe that can give a tax exemption. But the problem is that the member states saw this com coming and they did not decide all of the finance ministers, they all said, oh, uh, this uh, uh, tax exemption could be uh, beneficial to others. And so they don't really agree. And so the, uh, this exists, uh, uh, but uh, it's only minimally used. And so we are attacking, attacking this. And we, you know, there's only just a few of us. Uh, trying to work on this and so I'm going to do all of the regions that have borders with the various uh, 
other countries uh, in France that are bordering other countries, and I say, hey, help us because I am financing surveys uh, state by state to help us uh, make secure uh, all of this uh, European legislation and precedents. So, if I can ask you more symbolically speaking, uh, what is the impact for you, either for you know the various populations and the project bearers on the international level? And of course, we're not talking about peace in the world, but um, and um, is it uh, you know what about your mission internationally, artistically speaking? Well, for me. Uh, I think it's important, you know, to have, um, to know the language of each country and uh, you have to, you know, be uh, in control uh, uh, and uh, for an international market and you have to uh, know what you're doing. And of course, for the technology, you have to be able to be integrated and what can be of help would be to... Uh, you know, you need figures uh, to help the foreign countries that don't have the means in their own countries, um, you know, to uh, host each festivals. Because even for the major festivals, they have to go ahead and do their uh, uh, work. And I think the festival at Avignon, because, you know, and this international focus uh, conference, I think this is an excellent initiative. And really, I think it's a, a very rich uh, over the years, and it, you know, has us discover a lot of other aspects that we didn't even know of. Uh, and I think that these are great meetings and encounters. And I would like to say special thanks to those who have created this. You know, it's other than the presidents. It was Gabriel. Well, Gabriel, I don't know where she is, but thank you, Gabriel. You are being applauded very warmly. Thank you. So now the dialogue, we're not... Jan? Well, yes, if you want to have access to the international world, you have to create an international team. If you take a, a Swiss, a Belgian, and a German, that's three countries already for the promotion of your work. Uh, and uh, so then uh, either, other than talking about uh, promoting and uh, uh, presenting your work uh, there, then you're already halfway there. Um, and we have authors of nine countries where French is the official language, and so that gives you a chance to knock on nine doors, nine governments, and to say, okay, let's work together because we have a really international project here. And so there, there you've got it. So, so as I say, you're already halfway there. Well, I well the advice or the conclusion that I would bring uh, would be to say that we talked about platforms, networks, etc. in the uh, previous roundtable sessions, and I think what's important is to remember that you know you uh, you know either the big guy or the small guy, and so. Don't forget that both are enriching, and uh, so it's really uh, enriching to receive. It's also very rich, enriching to give. And so, you know, they say in neuroscience, the zones of the brain are activated in the uh, uh, joy of receiving are the same as uh, in that of giving. And so you have to accept to giving, uh, you know, to receive a lot and uh, you have to take the time and uh, you have to enjoy receiving and enjoy giving as well. And so that's part of uh, collective intelligence. Uh, I worked a lot in the international uh, realm and I have invented a term called tumultus gallicus. Of course, it's Bastille Day today. 
but uh, not very uh, adapted here. But uh, uh, it's uh, the uh, uh, this uh, notion of. Um, all being very individualistic and I think we should start sharing more so thank you thank you very much to the three of you for having participated here and so now we're going to have some Taiwanese so thank you Jan, thank you DJ, thank you Renato for being with us and and so it's 4.30 now Gabrielle, Gabrielle's not here she's gone Oh, yes, so, okay, so thank you, Mathieu, thank you, thank you very much. Have a good day, then.